easily confused for an ichneumon wasp or other parasitoid wasps that are out there. This is actually a fly. From the order Diptera and from the family Micropezidae, this is the stilt-legged fly. Their family consists of about 500 species and about 50 genera and five subfamilies worldwide and are most diverse in tropical and subtropical habitats. Tropical? It was 99 degrees here in the Carolinas last week. All right, so be honest. Is it me or have you ever heard of these ant and wasp mimicking flies before? I haven't, and boy was this exciting to explore because I couldn't even figure out what they were at first. Everything was pointing towards the ichneumon wasp. They're characterized by their long, thin legs. Their forelegs are noticeably smaller than their other pairs. They're mostly long-bodied, often black flies, with darkened, infuscated, narrow wings. They're very slender, and they can get to 3 to 16 millimeters in length, and their head is small and elongated or rounded. Their colors and movements are so peculiar, and very little is still known about them. But first, let's get to the bottom of why some of these stilt-legged flies are trying to mimic wasps and ants. And the reason is protection. Ant mimicry by other organisms, mainly insects, has independently evolved over 70 times in different species. Ants are abundant all over the world and it is a predator that relies on vision to identify their prey. So, safety can be derived by taking on their appearance. And many spider species have figured this out as well. It's so mind-blowing how creatures have evolved and figured this out to the highest levels of accuracy and the fossil record shows that as long as ants have been around since the mid-Cretaceous period, their predators and prey have learned to start mimicking them both anatomically and in behaviors and aggressive behaviors. And to mimic wasps, nothing messes around with wasps. They're, for the most part, pretty much completely avoided by all animals, so their safety looking like an angry, stinging insect when in fact, these flies are pretty defenseless. So these guys are actually known for standing motionless while waving their prominently marked front legs in front of their heads like this. This behavior is specifically contributing to their mimicry of wasps. Before I even understood what was going on here, I thought he was just trying to siphon the air towards him or attract its prey towards it or its mouth parts or something. But now I know it's all for display. This, this is the act. He's saying, hey, if there's anything checking me out right now, you don't want none of this. I'm a wasp. Come get this receipt. Well, it, it worked for me. I wasn't willing to find out the hard way if that thing was a stinger or not. But like most flies, they will either look for and feed on small insects and are attracted to excrement or decaying fruit. When they're in their larval stage, they'll be herbivores or detritivores contributing to the decomposition of decaying vegetation and other nutrients back into the environment. They can live under barks of trees, by the roots of plants, sometimes feeding on the roots, or on old manure or fungi. And look at this, that's exactly what we have here. I bought this brown mulch, this is a bag of brown mulch that I got for making a garden bed around my shed, and a significant percentage of all this is decaying plant matter, and the rest is pine bark. Shoot, I should have opened, if I known, I should have opened the bag for him. You want some nutrients? You want to lay some eggs? Or both? Here you go, have at it. Either way, I'm just thrilled for the visit to figure this all out and to shed more light on these guys and bring about awareness for these stilt-legged flies. They're intimidating, harmless, fascinating, and beneficial. And not an Anik Newman wasp. How cool. Thanks for joining me. What will we find next?